Welcome to 3MG TV. On today's question of the day, are you learning your instrument wrong? Today, I want to pose a bit of a discussion topic. I want to discuss how sometimes I think people learn their instrument the wrong way. So, here's what I mean. If you're a guitar player, you probably initially learned your chords as shapes. Most of your open chords you recognize as shapes. The early pentatonic blues scales you recognize as shapes and positions. And everything you do is a shape and a position. So there's like this geographic knowledge of music through the instrument. And then, if things ever become complicated, like you start to want to play classical music or jazz or particular rock songs and you need to play this note, that note, and the other note, a lot of times it's very difficult to translate all that shape knowledge, which has been kind of idiomatic and practical and even useful, uh, into, okay, now I need this note, that note, and the other note. So, where I feel like this becomes a problem is this, it working a different direction, is in like band students. So let's say you play trumpet, and the way that you learned how to play trumpet was I need to play a D, and you learned that D is whatever partial to blow and this button, this valve button. And now, when you see the note D, you just attach that shape and its position to a thing. Not necessarily that's a D note, or any of its relevance to the key that you're in or what its function is in the song. So then your band person tends to have some difficulty improvising uh, say in jazz band, after marching band, or after concert band. And oppositely your guitar guy who plays so geographically and with you know just sort of by the idiomatic nature of shapes, they have trouble being very specific. And the reason why, or a way that I think that this is best illustrated, is imagine that if you know your instrument by shapes and feelings relative to sort of singular inputs, it's as if you're playing music with a bunch of notes strewn across the floor, like post-it notes. And then, whatever key that you need to be in, let's say we're going to improvise on a jazz song, every time you go to play a note or a chord, you jump down on the floor, s scatter through your notes and your files, and you pick up the one that you need. And that is very, that gets very difficult as you get more, I mean look, there's 12 notes in the chromatic scale, and then you have a major scale for each of those, so that's 12 things to remember. And then if you make the minor, just the basic minor scales, and now you have 24 things to remember. Each single chromatic note has got a major chord, so now that's however many things to remember, and it goes up and up and up, and that becomes a lot of shapes. And that becomes a lot of little notes of individual singular and disconnected things all over that you're trying to work with. And then when somebody says, I have a way to bring order to this by music theory or however, then it becomes, well, I'm not even thinking, like let's say the trumpet player, I'm not even thinking that that's a D note anymore. And now you've got a problem. Anyway, those are just some ideas to consider, especially if you're a classical player Strug suddenly struggling with improvisation or an improvisational sort of player suddenly struggling with kind of following something written um, leave some comments let me know what you think about that and uh, let's see if we can help to find a way forward to all get better at whatever it is that we're trying to do